Welcome everyone to the 2023-2024 season of the Bowling Promotion Tour Cubica AMF Masters Series. This is the sixth of 14 matches we'll be bringing you as part of this Masters stepladder. In our match today, it's the Battle of the Twins. Number 10 qualifier Karen Kiergaard Nielsen will bowl her twin, the number 11 qualifier Sophie Kiergaard Nielsen, both from Denmark. Sophie is coming off a win against Gaton Carew in our last match. And Karen will kick us off on the left lane. And here she goes. And very nice stroke. Unfortunately, it looks like it's a little bit right of target. And that ball picks up in the mid lane and goes through the beak. Let's see where this crossed. Just outside of second arrow. But boy, did that pick up at the back end of the mid lane and the back end. And leaves the 4 7 10 split. Very difficult conversion. She moves over to her plastic ball to go straight at this spare. She needs to get the ball to the left of the four pin and does so. Kicks the four pin off to the right, but not enough cut to catch, catch the 10. So that will leave her open in the first frame. And now we'll get our first look at Sophie. She's a right-hander, so we have a lefty and a righty. But of course, you can imagine at 18 years old, both bowling for seven years, they've bowled each other many, many times. So we'll see how this match ends up with the TV lights and all the pressure of the master stepladder on the line. And here is Sophie with that purple hammer. You can see the pin above her fingers trying to get the ball down the lane to have maximum turn on the back end. And she makes a beautiful shot right up the track and strikes in her first frame. We are on the gateway arch oil pattern. It is a 42 foot, 9.3 to 1, 26 mil pattern. The difference now is we are now into our sixth match with practice. So that track area, which is really where you play this pattern, it's pretty flat from the gutter into about the ninth or 10th board around the second arrow. Then the oil goes up quite a bit, up to a nine to one ratio. So there's quite a bit of oil inside of the second arrow. And as you move into that oil, Sometimes you have trouble getting the ball to make the turn and keep its angle through the pocket, especially when you're throwing urethane like both of these ladies are. So here's Sophie's second shot. And here's an example. She goes outside of the oil on the second arrow, gets it to the right, picks up the dry, and that left lane has been the drier lane, and that ball just dives through the beak and leaves her the same 4-7-10 split that her sister just left. So let's see if she can take a shot at this spare. It's even more difficult for the right-hander to make the 4 7 10 And she just does clip off the 7 pins, leaving her open, which will leave her 26th in the second frame. So on paper, Karen now with the 3-pin lead. All these competitors have bowled an 18-game qualifier and the top 16 advanced to the stepladder finals. We saw Monica Schack Nielsen of Denmark defeat three opponents, Gerald Denson, Stanislaw Nodine, and Gwendol Jaleef before falling to Gaten Carew, who was bested by Sophie in our last match. And now you're up to date on the matches, and there's a good shot into the pocket there by Karen. Unfortunately, she blows the five in front of the, the 10 cannot get it to carry and that's a pretty good looking shot there you can see the turn into the pocket the ball does clip the five but not enough to take out the 10 so that will be a straightforward spare the 10th frame for 10 pin for Karen and she goes cross lane to the 10 pin no problem my name is Bruce Hall I'm your international commentator for these matches you can actually see Bruno Badone there right behind Karen. He and Helene Parker are your announcers for the French version of these matches. And if you stick around after the match, there'll be an interview with the loser of this match, whoever, whichever twin it may be. And so let's see how Karen adjusts on this left lane. She was high last time she says, was it me or was it the lane? Do I adjust? And that's definitely right of target. That one was on the beak even sooner down the lane than the first frame. 
And she goes through for the 2-4-7 spare on the left side, which leaves these two ladies exactly tied in the second, both with 26 on the second. So why not with twins exactly tied? And now Karen goes right up the edge to shoot that 2-4-7. That's a somewhat of a popular way to shoot that. Um, you try to go cross lane, it can be harder to to knock down all three of those pins, and that is a very difficult spare, as any pro will tell you. And so now, we'll go back to Sophie on the right lane and see how she does. Normally, uh, when there's mixed competition, women against men, the women would get an 8-pin handicap, but here, obviously, it's two women, so no handicap for either player. And here goes Sophie the right lane. She threw a beautiful strike here last time and comes up. This time throws it through the break for a seven count. And unfortunately, this ball gets inside. We talked about that oil inside of 10. That ball crossed about 14, and she I don't think she quite caught it at the bottom. And so it didn't pick up in the mid lane to turn towards the pocket and goes through the break point for the two, four, five spare. It's a variation of the of the bucket leave. And throws that plastic ball right at it and covers that. So both players with 26 in the second. Both players with seven spare in the third. Yes, we have twins bowling each other, sure enough, uh, as they're bowling exactly the same score so far. And now let's see how Sophie responds to the uh, high hit that she had last time on this left lane. In fact, both bowlers going high on this left lane. It has been the drier of the two lanes. And let's see how Sophie does here. And does she move left? Does she try to go straighter up the oil? Let's see what happens. That's definitely straighter up the oil. Holds on and just a little high in the pocket for a four pin. And as we said, this pattern is getting beaten up quite a bit by these matches that have come before us and so it may be difficult for uh, for either player to have a consistent look into the pocket. We did have left have lefties on on the TV show as well so uh, there has been some play on the left that would have changed that pattern as well but definitely on the right for Sophie. And she takes her spare ball goes straight at the spare good cover there and now we have seen exactly one strike through seven frames so far for these two ladies, an indication of the difficulty of how this pattern has been transitioning. Actually, if you look at the ball layout, you can see the pin above Karen's fingers as well. So both of these twins have their purple hammers laid out pretty much exactly the same. See what Karen does here. Went blower 10 last time. Gets it out to the dry. Turns it up. Oh, come on. Really? A paralyzer 5. Wow. What a, what a good shot she made. She came in and she gets the mixer and the 5. She's looking at this. She's like, how does that happen? It was this para what we call the paralyzer 5. You know, the 5 moves over and it does not fall down. And now we have everyone's hands going up because if by chance Karen were to miss this five pin, she would owe everybody in the building a drink. But being 18, <laughs> I'm not sure she'll be able to buy everybody a drink, but I also don't think she's gonna miss this five pin. Look at these characters with their hands up in the background. And just take your time. The pin is moved to a little bit to the right if you see that. So the machine picked it up and set it down and no problem on the conversion there. And once again, we are exactly tied through three frames. Are these twins or what? And again, one strike through eight attempts tells you how difficult it is not just to get to the pocket, but also to carry on this gateway arch oil pattern. Of course, quite a bit you see accomplished bowlers may struggle in the first few frames of a game. And they're tweaking around, looking for where the break point is, trying to figure out how the lanes have broken down, and then you see strings of strikes at the back of the game. So that's quite quite common. And let's see if we can see that here through either player. I 
Karen, another good shot, turns it up. No doubt about that one. That was dead flush in the pocket. And the ball rolled up beautifully. She must have moved her feet to the right. It's kind of hard to tell from this angle, but certainly no doubt about where that ball went through the pins. Absolutely perfect. And now Sophie must strike to match. Karen strike in the fifth and stay tied. Once again, this is our sixth of 14 matches we'll be bringing you as part of this master stepladder. We are watching the twins, Sophie and Karen, bowl each other. And, oh no, really, a beautiful pocket hit. And she leaves the smash seven pin. That is just no good, no fair for Sophie. This is a beautiful shot. Look at this. And she gets it out to the dry, turns up beautifully, a little bit high in the pocket, but just does not get any love on that seven pin and leaves it. That's going to leave her one pin behind, presuming she converts the spare, which she does no problem. So we now have a one pin advantage in Karen. Let's see now what Sophie does now in the right lane again. We're nibbling around the pocket, and a couple of shots definitely should have been strikes. That paralyzer five that Karen left last frame and that smash seven, both have definitely should have been strikes. So we've only got two strikes in five frames, but we should have more than that. And you could argue that Karen should have a double because that paralyzer five should have gone. We are going to be having mixed competition coming up, mixed doubles and team competition coming up on the same YouTube channel, so watch out for that. And now Sophie on the right lane gets it out to the dry, turns up, no doubt about that strike. And perfect shot there by Sophie. Once again, these are 18-year-old twins bowling each other, both bowling for about seven, seven and a half years. And really wonderful to watch some accomplished ta talent from the from the Denmark area. Both of these players are on the Danish youth team. And they are both medalists from around the Danish competitive arena this year. And let's see how Karen does here on the left lane. Gets it out to the dry. Another good shot. This time she blows the 5 into the 10. And the 10 goes out. And that's for a double. So her one pin lead just got extended to 11. Great shot by Karen. These girls both have wonderful leverage at the bottom. They have great knee bend, great position at the line. All that power is getting into the ball. Great leverage. And it was definitely evident on that shot with the five blowing into the 10 pin. Sometimes you get a little bit more relaxed as the game goes on. And you don't squeeze as much, just let, let your hand go soft, and all that power transfers down to the ball to give you your best chance of striking. And here is Karen, left lane, straight up, stay there, and flushes that shot. That's three in a row for Karen. Good looking ball. She likes it, she likes it, she likes it. Oh, yes. Perfect. Pocket strike on the left lane. So what do we just say? These girls have looked at the lanes. They're adjusting. They're moving. And Sophie should definitely have a double here after that smash seven pin. Just a nasty break she got on the fifth frame. Let's see if she can basically just make the same shot here. And there's a really good chance she'll double to try to catch up to Karen. Karen now with a 21 pin lead. And that is way to the right, turns up, perfect strike. Good shot, she got that to the right of target for sure, but that dry out there picked up, and not too much, as it would have on the left lane, I think. And let's see this ball go out there. It gets out to about the seventh board, maybe, but it turns up through the pocket for a perfect strike. And now, can we get it back to one pin with a strike here for Sophie? Girls are starting to strike now. Here we go. Five out of our last six shots have been strikes here. And Sophie sets. And good looking stroke. Gets it out. 
Gets it in the oil, down the lane, perfect strike. One pin match. This is really exciting to watch these twins go at it. Cupica AMF Strike Tour Series is a special event organized by Bowling Promotion for the French Federation and the French Olympic Sport Channel for the promotion of bowling in general and the French teams specifically. And as we said, thanks so much to Cupica AMF who have signed on for a three-year commitment to sponsor this master series. We'll have some names coming up for you. Jack Blythe, Halver Hagen Nielsen, Kenny Bio, and Jaime Gonzalez coming up in this stepladder as we get closer to the number one seed in the championship match. And now one pin lead for Karen. Can she bring it back to 11? Oh no, a terrible split on the right lane. That ball picked up hard on the mid lane. I don't know if she threw it a little slow or got it right of target, but that ball went through for a nasty, nasty two, four, six, seven split. 2, 4, 6, 10, sorry. And now she takes a shot at the split, only gets two. And that is going to put her behind substantially. And that was about the worst time that that could have happened for Karen. And she's just saying, oh, didn't want that to happen there for sure. So, and 139. So, Karen all of a sudden finds herself down quite a bit and 110 140 60 down 17 pins now she is to her sister all of a sudden with just one shot that's sometimes the way this game goes you make one bad shot it gets six split and all of a sudden you are on a triple and you find yourself down quite a bit so let's see if Karen can recover here uh, just wondering what the delay is here. We have a ball return issue, perhaps? Yeah, it looks like we might. There it is. Okay. And uh, and really not a good time for that to happen. <laughs> for Karen to try to get back into her groove here. Didn't need to be have a delay and be iced out there. So now all of a sudden, it's a 17-pin lead for Sophie, who was down only one frame ago. And now Karen... On this left lane, turns it up, gets the rolling six pin, the late six, to go. So good shot there. Now let's do some maximums here. Karen can strike out for 207. And right now, Sophie is pacing to 204. So by no means is this match out of reach for Karen. But Sophie controls her own fate here. If she can strike here and then get a mark, she will shut out Karen but this is a very big shot and the question what you don't want to do is give Karen back the split <laughs> that she just gave you so you want to keep yourself out of trouble a nine count is a good outcome here but she definitely wants the strike to get herself going and turn up through the pocket slaps the 10 gets the four bagger great shot there She's trusting that ball to the right. Watch this ball go across with a really great angle right between the second and third arrow out to the dry boards. Turns back in. Look at the six pin. Goes into the gutter. Slaps the 10. And that was a huge shot. Putting Sophie now into the two teens. Pacing to two teens. So if she just gets a spare, any mark here will lock up the match for Sophie. Again, it could have been anyone's match, just that one shot by Karen. If she is to, to lose this match, really just would have been that one shot. You get it a little bit right, and it turns on you. And unfortunately, just a bad break there. Here goes Sophie to lock it up. Down the lane, good shot in the pocket. Perfect pocket strike. That's the best kind of mark there is. And this match is history. It will be... Sophie Kiergaard Nielsen winning two matches in a row against Gaton Carew and then against her twin sister to move on. And the winner of this match will face the next qualifier coming up, the number nine qualifier, Anthony Trigodet of France. And that will be our next match. So congratulations to Karen Kiergaard Nielsen for 
Coming back with the five bagger, she nibbled around the pocket for the first five frames, but then threw the back five. And let's see if she can strike again here to get into the 230s. And another shot down the lane, gets the mixer, and indeed does get about the back six for Sophie. And what a great performance she showed in the back half of this game. As we said, sometimes you nibble around the pocket for the first half of the game and you perform in the back half. This is a really a, what pros do, so good for these ladies in, in analyzing lanes, watching their ball reaction, and making their adjustments to do well at the back end of this match. So it will be Sophie Kergard-Nielsen moving on to face Anthony Trigadet of France our number nine qualifier in our next match. And this will be Sophie's last shot. And oh, there's a interesting leave. Oh my goodness. How about a 8-10 in the pocket? That was the strangest 8-10 I've ever seen. It's a good thing it was only for count because it only cost her two pins in count. So 232 and unfortunately the most Karen can shoot here is 207. Let's see what adjustment she makes after that nasty split that cost her the match, really. And she she does make the move, right? Of course, yeah, of course, perfect strike makes the move. And if she had done that in the eighth, she'd still be alive in this match because she did have the one pin lead, unfortunately. You can see that backswing, the, the uh, pendulum backswing, and long arms and legs on these ladies. And they're using it to their advantage by having that full pendulum swing. It gives the maximum leverage down through the shot at the release point. So this is a good this is a good place to see her arm swing. See that swing back there and looking very solid. And there's a weak seven that's gonna put her in the 190s. And 196 with a conversion here. So once again, thanks everyone for tuning in. Please hit like and subscribe. Check out bowling promotion if you'd like to be part of this tour. And she goes, oh, well, just goes by the seven pin there. But no problem, a good match, and uh, really exciting towards the end. Just one problem shot for, for Karen Costa of the match. Congratulations to Sophie. She'll be moving on. And please stay tuned for the interview with Karen Kergard-Nielsen and Bruno. And he's talking to her now to do that. Now you can see, now look at that long, that nice long arm swing, nice long stroke. And this, I think, is her first shot in the 10th and a beautiful pocket strike there that she needed so desperately in the 8th frame and unfortunately was unable to make it happen. And again, look at the long arm swing there of Karen and a beautiful shot there. And that's the strike, I think, that locked it up for her. So there's some nice looking shots here. Congratulations to both of these, these twins. They have wonderful futures. And once again, I'm Bruce Hall and stick around for the interview with Karen. Karen, difficult to ball against your sister. Uh, very close match after the seventh frame. Unfortunately, a big split, so you lost. So what is your feeling after this match? Well, it's always hard to like compete against your sister because of all the comparison you get, but I think she, she did a better job than me, so I think she deserves to win the match. So I think this is your first time to ball on TV? Uh, yes, it is the first time with cameras around me. So not very easy with the light and uh, public? No, but you kind of like put yourself in the box uh, and you, you know, focus on your own game, on your own throws. and So so I kind of got used to it by the end, but that was too late. Okay, so now we have the team matches. Uh, you are confident with your team to win this title? Yes, I am confident with my team that maybe we can win a few points and go a little bit further than we no normally did. Okay, thank you, Karen.